3.6 is on the chain rule. <clears throat> Let's take a look at that. This is a really important concept we'll see quite a bit or throughout calc. So <clears throat> it's really the chain rule has to do with the derivative of a composite function or composition of functions. So um, let's just first do that, I guess. So composition of functions. So you have two functions, f and g, f composed with g of x <coughs> is f of g of x. And then you could go the other direction, g composed with f of x is f of, oops, sorry, g of f of x. <coughs> so that's the composition. Uh, I'm sure you've seen that before at some point. So what's the derivative of that? What if we see, you know, <coughs> ddx of f of g of x or vice versa, what does it look like? Uh, and I'll show it without proof, uh, without a proof. Uh, so look it up. Um, it, it's reasonable. It's just uh, you can only do so much through the whole class. So <coughs> let's look at that then, the derivative Uh, of composition of functions. Okay, kind of redundant there, but that's okay. So let's let f and g be differentiable. So <clears throat> usually when I say that, that means differentiable derivative in context. Then <clears throat> let's look at what is d dx of f composed with g of x. Then that is d dx, we'll just write it in the parenthesis notation, f of g of x. What does that equal? <clears throat> so what you do is you do the derivative of the entire thing. Move that over. I always do that. I'll just start on the left every time. So <clears throat> derivative of the entire thing. So it would be f prime of whatever's inside. And then times the derivative of what's inside, g prime of x. So let's look at a number of examples. I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, we could look at the proof, of course, why that works. Uh, but you use the definition of limit and expand it out and see if you get, you know, recollect and see if you get the same thing. So that's what happens. You just got to use all the properties to do that. <clears throat> so, for example, let's let uh, f of x equal the square root of x and g of x equal x squared plus 1. <clears throat> so it's when you compose the function together it's like a like one function like it's not it's a different function so I could say and I'll you don't have to write all this h of x out and stuff this is just kind of showing you what I what I have, so if you do h of x is defined to be f composed with g of x, that is f of g of x. And so that would be the square root of x squared plus 1. <clears throat> and in our notation, we may like that better as uh, x squared plus 1 to the half because you're, you, need, you need to subtract that exponent, right? So find h prime would be our question. Okay, so let's just move this down here for now. So find h prime of x. So you need to picture, like, you cannot bring across that half to each of those terms, right? That, that's a big, uh, big fallacy, big no-no in math. So you can't bring this guy into here and here 
and raise it to a half. It, there's nothing you can do. Like, that's it. It's just the square root of x squared plus 1. You can't separate those terms out. <clears throat> so we need to use chain rule. That's what allows us to do it. So with chain rule, it opens up a lot more things we can take a derivative of. So what we say then is h prime of x is equal to, and I'll write it all out this time, ddx of all of that, which is x squared plus 1 to the half. So you, do, you treat it as the derivative of the whole thing. So like this is one thing. It's like x to the half. Well, that's just 1 half x raised to the 1 half minus 1. <clears throat> so you let's get rid of that. We don't really need that. So you say the derivative of the entire thing is a half times what's inside, x squared plus 1. And then it's a half minus 1, which is negative a half. Then you have to say times the derivative of what's inside, d dx of x squared plus 1. And then you do that second part <clears throat> eventually without, you know, after 5 maybe. Start doing that in your head. And you'll get just 2x, right? You get this is 2x and then that's a 0. So you get... <clears throat> this equal to 1 half x squared plus 1 raised to the negative a half times 2x and then plus 0. And then you just reduce that. <clears throat> you go ahead and reduce the, uh, the half and the 2. And so you'd probably write that as x over x squared plus 1. And you could say to a half, but normally go ahead and write it in root form because you started in root form. So started in square root form, end in square root form. Okay, <clears throat> so that's the basic idea. Now it's just time to practice. We'll, I'll do a couple. This is when I usually have you practice a bunch of these and, and the old stuff as well. So uh, I'll do, uh, well, these are pretty quick. We'll just work them out. I mean, there's more to do in the book, of course. So here's next example. So find f prime. So f of x equal to sine x squared. <clears throat> it's implied. There's parentheses there, but let's put them in there. Okay, so then you say f prime of x. Then what's the derivative, derivative of sine? Derivative of sine is cosine, so you just say cosine x squared. Derivative of the whole thing times what's inside, so you just leave it. And then times the derivative of what's inside, which is just 2x. And so normally, with, so you don't have any ambiguity of what's inside the trig function, you bring the 2x out front. So you'd commute that, and it's 2x cosine x squared. <clears throat> okay. Try another one. Feel free to pause these and try them. f of x is the square root of x cubed. Uh, that one, you know, you could, uh, you could just write that as x to the 3 halves <clears throat> and then work it out. So, so just watch both ways. I think we did this before. So you could say this is just x to the third and then that whole thing raised to the half. So that's just x to the three halves. And then you could just take that derivative. So that's just f prime of x is just three halves. <coughs> uh, x to the 3 halves minus 1. So it's just 3 halves x to the, <clears throat> and so it's 2 over 2, so it's uh, 1 half. Okay, so just to be clear, that is not the chain rule. So, okay, right, so not chain rule. Here you did a little 
algebra first before you did chain rule. Okay, now, now use chain rule. So you use chain rule, f prime of x, would be derivative of the whole thing, which would be a half times what's inside, and then that'll be a negative a half, times the derivative of what's inside is 3x squared. So that's just 3 halves, and then it's the 3 and the 2 is just the 3 halves. And then you just have to simplify this. So this is x to the negative 3 halves times x squared. So that's 2 over 2. So now you're just doing negative 3 halves plus 2 over 1. you got to do LCD, 4. So that's just going to be a half. So it's 3 halves x to the half. And oh, look, it's the same as above. <clears throat> of course it is. I wouldn't have you do this if it wasn't the same stuff. So you get this must, of course, be the same as this. Which one was easier? In that case, easier to do a little algebra first before you simplify. This took a little while. i got to add these up. <clears throat> so sometimes, often, it's easier to do a little bit of algebra to simplify your calculus. So keep that in mind. Okay, let's try another one. This one happens to be number 20 in that section. They give us Q is the cube root of 2R minus R squared. And you can rewrite that as 2R minus R squared raised to the 1 third. And so find Q prime. <clears throat> okay, so try that. Sure, I've done that back there as well, but. Okay, so try it, pause. Okay, so Q prime, derivative of the whole thing, which is one third, times what's inside. It's almost like you just ignore what's inside. You just write it, rewrite it down. And then, <clears throat> one third minus one, so you're basically doing one third minus three over three is negative uh, two thirds. Okay, so you just write that. So <clears throat> negative two thirds times the derivative of what's inside, which is going to be put in parentheses which will be negative 2r plus 2. And then probably want to simplify that a bit. I'll write that as 2 minus 2r. No reason to flip that, actually. Thought maybe I did want to, but in reality, just leave it. So let's go ahead and do, write that as 3, and then it's just 2r minus r squared raised to the positive two-thirds, and the numerator is just 2 minus 2r. Two <clears throat> Nothing really you can simplify. I mean, you could factor out the 2, and so it's just 2 times, you would be like, you know, 2 times 1 minus r, but nothing down here to reduce with the 2, so might as well just leave it. So that's good right there. Okay, let's do one more. f of x equal to sine cosine x squared minus 2. <clears throat> and try that. Okay, so try it. And pause it, give you some time on that one. And this, you're going to need to do it twice. Two chain rules on this one. Okay, so f prime, derivative of the whole, th so derivative of sine is cosine, so it's going to be cosine of 
what's inside, cosine x squared minus 2, times the derivative of what's inside, which is cosine. So it's going to be a minus sine of x squared minus 2 times the derivative of what's inside that, which is just going to be 2x. Okay, so this is your derivative of what's of the whole thing times what's inside. I'm sorry, times what's inside is this whole thing here. This is the derivative of cosine. And then it's times this derivative here. <clears throat> so it's negative 2x cosine of cosine x squared minus 2 times sine of x squared minus 2. Now, <clears throat> just so you know, you got to like really start picturing how these work because in the long run, not right away, but if you're going on to Calc 2, uh, integral calculus, you're, we're going to go backwards to here. Uh, not, I don't think we do something like this you know, right away, but that's the goal, is to not just do derivatives, but that's this direction, but we'll work from this direction to this direction. That's more interesting. Okay, <clears throat> so um, practice, practice, practice more of those. You need to do a bunch of those derivatives. Okay, so that finishes up 3.6. We will go on to 3.7 next.